Welcome to my channel. I am Hydro Mike and I'm excited to start a new series on my channel called Coding with Hydro. I am a very beginner when it comes to coding. I picked up a little bit of Python here in the last couple weeks and I would like to start developing a game, a simple game, and as I learn, hopefully you guys will learn and we can figure these things out from the standpoint of a new uh, a new person that's starting to code. I've watched a lot of tutorials and a lot of them make things sound easy. They're still just a pain in the ass. But uh, after watching some tutorials and learning some things, um, I was able to create Pong Um, in about eight hours. Um, it works. It's got a player one score, a player two score, a ball speed up, and two paddles. Um, it doesn't have an AI. I, I have, um, A and Z. We're supposed to, uh, control my, uh, oh, sorry, A and Z, geez. W and S control my uh, player one up and down control player two and spacebar serves it's got a little sound effects um, the ball speed up is it's counting down how many times it hits the paddle once it hits the paddle a total of ten times the ball will speed up one pixel per frame and so on and so forth it'll go forever and you know until you exit I would like to create a a menu for it and, and an AI for it for a computer player. However, I haven't got to those things yet. So, but what I would like to start to do in my for first in my series is just code a game called Frogger. Everybody knows Frogger from way back in the day. You have a frog, you gotta get across the road, hop on some logs to get across the river and get to the other side and so on and so f so forth just like that so I think it'll be easy everything is based on a square or a rectangle which make it easy to figure out where things are at so with that said this first video I'm going to just go over what environment I'm going to use and what language um, what library I'm going to use and that's really about it so I'm going to be using an environment called PyCharm which you can see behind my picture here um, it's just an environment that will compile my code and then run it I don't have to go like to the command prompt to run it I don't have to make it in a text document or anything like that. I just build it all right in here. PyCharm will compile it and run it for me. I mean, that it doesn't turn it into an exe file. I couldn't give it to my friend so he can just click on one button and play it. But there are steps to take that you can do that from this. Um, the language I am going to be trying to code in. Trying is a good word here. Remember, I am very beginning to this. This is all going to be from me struggling and hopefully us learning together. Um, I'm going to be using Python. Um, more importantly, inside Python, there's a library called Pygame that I am going to be using that has some built in features that makes some of the common game settings, attributes, whatever you want to call them, easier, like keyboard presses and things like this. So, from the start here, we are going to start by creating a new, um, I guess it's not called a sketch, but a new uh, project. There we go, a new project. We're going to call it Frogger, if I could spell Frogger. We're going to open it in this window. 
it's going to build up everything it needs to create a new one. And there we go. So now I have this folder inside my designated area with its own little folder called Frogger. Now, that just created the folder. First things first, uh, I need to import the libraries that I want to use. Um, like I said, libraries are just built in functions that people have made or whatever that make um, certain things easier. They all have their own certain tasks that they accomplish to help you do what you want to do so you don't have to code everything from scratch every time someone's already done it and you can import libraries to help you complete your tasks right so I'm gonna be using Python 3.7 and now I've got to add my Pygame game library um, where well, there it is so I'm just gonna install package it's going to Basically, there you go, my Pygame package is installed, and all that does is makes it available. It now knows that I am going to now access the Pygame library in my project. So, I'm going to go new, create a new Python file, and I'm going to name this as well as Frogger. Most people would name this like main or something, but... Like I said, I'm new, so I'm not going to have several Python files that everything access. I'm just going to have one Python file with everything in it for now. Maybe down the road we'll learn something else. So, here we go. First things first. Since I'm using Pygame, I need to import it. Yes, it seems redundant. I just... I just installed the library and now I also got to tell it again that I want to use Pygame, but that's the way it is. So I'm going to import Pygame. And all this uh, squiggly line and editing type of thing, it's going to be showing up there inside this environment. It has built in things, so it's looking for hey, you got an error, it's going to highlight stuff, things like that, or attempt to. And the reason import Pygame is showing gray squiggly lines is because I actually haven't. It's basically telling me, hey, you're importing Pygame, but you're not using it for anything. So it's not this doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong here. But so my very first thing to explain this, if I put pygame dot init, which means initialize, I'm just saying, hey, initialize Pygame. It's just something you have to do. I want to use it. I have to initialize it first. And as you can see, the import Pygame. It uh, that little squiggly line disappeared, but there's one more thing here. If I want to use a function or method or whatever inside of Pygame, I have to type basically Pygame dot something, right? That gets very annoying eventually. So if I put Pygame or import Pygame as PG, that's basically just saying. Instead of writing pygame dot in it, I now just have to type pg in it, and it just it just helps out. See, everything goes back to hack, hack hunky dory again. All right, so that's literally the first thing you would do when you come to the project. I can have above here, you know, people like to have their. Uh, I guess I can explain commenting. Commenting means. Basically, you're leaving notes inside your script, your code, or whatever. And by doing that, you put a hashtag or pound sign. And you can put Frogger by Hydro. Right? And what that hashtag does is it just tells the environment that you're using to just skip this line. It means nothing to you. And it's just a way you can leave notes for yourself. So I can put hashtag anything in here. And it just acts like a, literally a note. Leaving a note inside my code for me or someone else that may look at it or anything like that. Right? And why it's staying underlined like that 
it's saying it's no, there's nothing wrong, but it's it's misspelled. You know, I don't know this word Frogger. But anyway, okay, so there you go. That's commenting. So if you see me do hashtag something, it just means I'm leaving a note for myself, more than likely. There's going to be other things here that we're going to import that we use that we're going to use as we get to them. Like I said, I don't know what they are yet. So first thing we're going to do is initialize, which we did. All right now, I could run this, and it's not going to do anything, right? If you could see the um, the bottom of my screen here. Get rid of this huge me. The bottom of the screen here says process finished with Xcode zero, meaning it, it ran and it didn't have any errors. But I didn't tell it to do anything, and there's no nothing to do. Alright. So after you initialize Pi game, you want to set some initial parameters, right? I want I need I need it a window. I need a game window. You know. I need. Um, let's see. Maybe, you know, I need a square on the screen or whatever it is you're gonna draw. Those all gotta be put somewhere. So you have to create a game window. So by doing that in Pi Game, basically, I'm gonna name it screen. Right. What screen is? Is it's a variable. I could have called it anything. I called it could have called it pink polka dots, right? Screen, anything before that, an equal sign, anything before any equal sign, right? A single equal sign. It's just me declaring a variable, saying I want this to equal something. So if I wrote sc screen equals, and then I put uh, quotation marks, which um, distinguishes it as a string which a string is just think of a string as a sentence I want it to be a string of text you know a sentence I'm gonna say hello world right hello world that's a typical thing everybody does right if I set screen to hello world if I run this now again nothing's going to happen right but if I had put underneath here print screen right so I'm saying right this is a variable all that it, it's a container all it's doing is holding this sentence so if I say print screen and now I run this it's gonna say down there at the bottom now look at that hello world I told it to print screen and print is just a function that anything I tell it to print will print down in this this box and I'll use that to help debug things like when I'm especially when it comes to numbers and things if I'm trying to add things up make sure they're adding up properly they'll all if I have an inside per se a loop it'll constantly be doing stuff down here that I can look to see if things are going wrong all right so that's printing printing just means I want to I'm looking for some information for you to tell me down here at the bottom all right so screen now I want the screen to hold my game window information, right? So I'm going to type, actually, you know what? That was kind of far away, huh? There we go. Is that better? So in Pi Game, how you create a game window, you say Pi Game, or in my case, PG, dot display dot set mode right see how this excuse me this text box popped up let me get this more room here I hate the hell it uh, makes that so big but anyway how this text box pops up this is pie charm telling me hey in pie game Pi game dot display dot something. These are all the options that I can use. Sometimes it has them all. Sometimes it may miss some. Sometimes it might not necessarily be right. But for the most part, it'll give you options you can just quickly check or check from. And I am going to use the set mode. I could type set mode 
or you know I can literally click it and it'll pop it in there now what set mode is looking for is a width and a height and that's going to be the width obviously the width of your screen and the height of your screen now this should be in something called tuples tuples just means it's inside a set of two parentheses right this is that that is a tuple and anything I want inside there will go there and so we'll say my screen width I'll say 600 right now I get comma and then my height let's say my height is we'll just say 600 as well so we'll make it a square basically so it's gonna be 600 pixels across pickles pixels across and 600 pixels pickle, man pixels down now right so this now what do you think would happen if I ran this any guesses if we run this what happens oh you saw it right it popped up right but it disappeared right so if I go if I guys give you this one and I hit run again watch oh it, it see it pops up and it goes away right why did it go away well you think about it, I I hit run and imported Pi game as PG initialized Pi game set the screen and then it ended there was nothing holding it open the program finished there's nothing else to do inside a game there's something called game loops and in general every program software has a loop that holds it in a state to keep it open right so to do this you create like I'm gonna create a variable and I'm gonna call it running right remember a variable is just I could have called this anything I could have called this going to work equals true right it doesn't matter what I anything I before an equal sign remember it's just something I've made up and I'm telling the environment to make it equal to something so if I printed running to screen it would come back and say true and true and false are called boolean values it's either gonna be true or false so zero or one that's it it's gonna be nothing else right so I'm just saying anytime I access running I'm trying to see if running is true or false and I'm gonna set those at certain times in the game to progress the code or in this instance hold open the window right so how we would make our very first very basic game loop right is I'm gonna say while running right and what that statement means is it's just saying while running if it's just saying while running is true that's all it means and this is the start of a loop there's one indent in and anything inside this indented in one time will be inside my while running loop right so as long as running is true everything in this code will it'll run it'll go first line to the end of the loop all the way back to the beginning of the loop to right where we are now back down again and it'll just keep looping through this however big this second this loop I make it'll keep looping in there right so how are we gonna keep this window open right basically while running is true it should stay open right but I don't want to do that because I don't want to just hit run now because then we'll have an infinity loop and all that means is there's a loop and there's no end I can't exit the game I can't why well, I could there's ways you can get out of it but uh, but right now this would be an infinity loop it would just go on forever I couldn't exit I couldn't do anything so we're gonna make sure there's a variables or some settings inside this loop that allow me to end it right 
So first thing we're going to do is we are going to create something that allows me to exit the window, right? And don't worry about what I'm going to type here. I'll go through it, but I'm just going to do it real quick. I am going to make a variable and I'm going to call it game events, right? And it's going to equal it to that event dot get event All right so this is right I made a variable called game events just something I made up again and it's equal to pi game event dot get and all that does the event dot get just basically it's every frame it gathers everything that's happened inside my game window whether it's a mouse click a keyboard press a color change well i don't know if it's the color change but keyboard presses mouse button presses all kinds of things are captured inside that so this game event will basically just be a huge list frame by frame of what's happening inside my game window right so pygame dot event dot get just creates a big old variable holding everything that's happening inside my game window at any given time right so next we got to find if something in those events that I want to capture happens I want something to happen right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a for loop or not a loop just a for statement sorry I'm going to say four, and now I'm going to make up a new variable, but I'm going to call it event because it makes sense. For event in game events, right? The for event, the event is just a variable I've made up, right? It's just a placeholder. And then I want it to look inside game events. Now remember, game events is holding everything that's happening inside my game window. In particular, mouse button presses and keyboard presses. So now I want, now that I've said the statement, I want I want to uh, evaluate. I want to try to see if something's true or false or happened or didn't happen. So I'm going to go if event, right? dot type which in pi game there's types and we could go through all this but it'll show you here in just a second if the type now equal equal okay so I've been using up to this point just one single equal sign right well what do you think two equal signs means when I am doing a single equal sign I'm saying game events equals this it is you make it this I want game events to hold everything that pi game dot event dot get gets right when I'm using two equal signs I want you to evaluate something I don't want I'm not setting game of er, I'm not setting event type equal to something I'm saying I'm asking a question does it equal something right so if event dot type equals pi game dot k and we are going to say um oh pi game dot quit for this one and what pi game dot quit is is it's just if the window exit button x gets pressed that's all i'm asking right now so if the event in game events is someone pushing the or clicking on the exit button what do I want to happen now well if you remember all of this is gonna run over well from while running from here down will run in a constant loop until what until I set running to false. So if someone hits the exit button, simple. Running equals false. Right? 
there you go. There's a couple other things we gotta add at the end of this, just so everything closes, right? So like I said, anything inside this indention line is inside this loop. So I'm going outside the loop. It's no longer inside the loop, right? So basically anything I put from here down will happen after this loop closes, right? So I set running to false or uh, if someone hits the exit button, running turns to false. They go to the top and go while running's true. Oh, running true is not or running is not true anymore. Okay, go to next. Next will be what I'm putting down right here. And I'm going to put pygame.quit. And that just closes out pygame. And I'm also going to put sys.exit like this. It's going to give me an error saying I have an unresolved reference called sys. And that is because that's one more thing that I need to import. And this is literally the only thing I'm going to use from sys that I know of at this point. So there you go. And that just makes sure it's Pi game and everything closes out like it should, right? So in theory now, we've imported Pi game, imported sys, we initialized Pi game, we created a screen that's 600 by 600, we created a variable that just equals true, and now we said while running is true, I want you to create a variable called game events and hold all the events that are happening inside my window, my game window, right inside this window. And then for each event that happens, I want you to evaluate whether it was pygame.quit, which is clicking the exit button. If someone clicks the exit bus button, set running to false, therefore ending this game loop or ending this loop. And the next action it's gonna take is pygame's gonna quit and also sys.x, which just closes out any anything else that may be running um, any kind of, that might be um, taking up resources, making sure all those close out, right? So let's give it a shot. We will go to the pod game window and we will hit run. And actually, you guys will not be able to see it in that view. But let's go here. There you go. You guys can see it there. Here's our window. The reason you guys can't see it, it was there, but it was black. And it doesn't show this top bar in the other view, so you couldn't see it. So there you go. Here's our Pi Game window. It is 600 pixels wide by 600 pixels deep. And now, if we hit the exit button, it will close. Closes, no errors we're good to go and that is literally the basis that I found that I've used so far for any game that I've done excuse me and that is going to be video one next video we are going to expand the game loop just a little bit maybe a couple more variables and maybe draw a rectangle to the screen right because like I said I was Frogger to me is just built on a bunch of squares and rectangles and once you have that all figured out you can just put pictures on things and I'll show you how to do that hopefully <laughs> but until next time this is Hydro you've been coding with Hydro have a good day later